motion or if, uh, you know, Brandy, do you want to amend your original motion to approve with that date corrected? I'll amend with the date correction. Okay. And then do we need a, a second on that again, Whitney? Yes. Okay. I'll second that. Okay. So Darcy seconded. And then do you want okay, to do so You want me to call roll? Yeah. Okay. Martel? Yes. Jude? Yes. Andal? Yes. Cuomo? Yeah. Roush? Yes. Connie? Yes. Van Orney? Yep. And Vanette? Not, I'm not hearing Trevor, but I, huh? we have a majority of the group. That's what I was going to say. I think, you know, the motion would carry anyway, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so then moving on, you know, we have the list of our um, 2020 goals. Now, as far as the committee, we have a full committee. A lot of the other things that we have listed down there um, right now are kind of on hold thanks to our, our friend Corona. So um, unless there's anything that somebody wants to add, we can probably move on to other business. Um, does anybody have any updates they want to share? We can start on the list uh, with student liaisons. I think Manisha, you've been kind of taking the lead on that. Is that still in a holding pattern? I think we're looking to touch base with that this fall, right? Yes, hi, this is Manisha. We are still putting it on hold, but you know, as, as things are progressing, I, I wanted to get everybody's input about how do you feel if we have a rough draft for our next meeting that we, we can start working on it at our end and, and have everything ready. So whenever life gets back to normal, if it ever does in 2020, then we can you know, start with reaching out to schools late as, as fall comes. I think that sounds great, Manisha. Is that something that you want to work on with that rough draft? Yes, I can. I'll take the hit of it. So I'll develop one and I'll bring it for our meeting next time. Okay. Yeah, I think that sounds great. When you say rough draft, you're talking about the communications that you'd send out to the schools. Is that right? Yeah, that's what I thought that we would want to start with. Just creating a few sentences um, about what what the role would be, what the expectation is, and very, very broad at this time, I think. And that way, once I have that, the committee can give in their inputs and, you know, we can make it better. No, I think that sounds great. So if you want to bring that back to the next meeting, then we can dive in and, and put a more concrete plan in place. Wonderful. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, moving on to the Diversity University, that's not really moving anywhere right now for the fall event. And that's partly because it's in relation with the schools. It's Legacy High School that we work with on that. I don't know that they're going to allow us to schedule a date yet or, or plan events at their facility given the, um, I don't think they know where they're at quite yet. So that's going to be something that we probably won't have an update on until October. Um, Brandy, you had been working, or not, sorry, October, August. Uh, Brandy, you'd been working on the spring event. I don't know if you have any updates on if that's something that you want to schedule later in the year? Or do you think that um, it's better if we, you know, wait until next year to, to host a spring event? I think, I think at this time with the Bismarck Event Center, just kind of postponing or canceling <clears throat> most of their, their leases, that it might be better to just kind of plan it for next year. And then we'd have adequate time to really work on it over the course of 2020. And I would agree with that. I know we usually try to host two events each year. Right. But of course, um, this wasn't something that we just didn't come through with. You know, it was either we're, we were going to have to cancel or postpone. And, um, and and by the Bismarck Event Center, the you know, we also have to follow their guidelines until, I mean, essentially 
through all of this. So, <clears throat> is does the committee have any? Do we want to have any discussion on that? Does everybody share that viewpoint at this point that we would move forward without a spring event? So, uh, if we don't have the spring events, uh, I was just kind of wondering as to whether we would be trying to organize, I mean, certain events during the fall, and if so, maybe we can replace the next skip program that we're going to be skipping this spring, you know, maybe just have this fall visit if everything goes well with the how it's been going with the virus, maybe we can just get us the four basic thing for since we might be skipping a couple of things this spring. So that's just what I want to kind of bring forth. If we cannot have anything this spring, maybe we can just have a basic fall. Yeah, colleagues. So every um that's I think that's a great suggestion. So every year we used to have four diversity university events each year. It seemed like a lot for the a committee of this size to commit to and and for the most part um just so you guys have a little history on that for for some of our new members when we had those four events it seemed less less frequently were we planning our own events and more frequently we were kind of hopping on board with events that other organizations or groups were putting on so the committee had decided that two diversity university event diversity university events might be better given our our budget the fact that we're a fully run by volunteers. So that's why we switched to the two. So every spring we have an event and that one's a little more fluid, I think. Uh, whichever committee member takes that one on it, it's since I've been on the committee, it's been a very new and different event every year. Uh, in the fall, we have a cultural dinner and that's been since pretty much since I've been on the committee as well. I think we're, this would be our fifth year. Um, and so that's our fall diversity university event. And that would be in November. So we, we do have one slated for the fall, as long as we're able to partner with the schools on that. It's our event, but Legacy High School does the catering and the education component in the classroom is kind of what really meets the goals of our committee. So um, the fall one's already in place. I think that given that we're having one in the fall and that the spring event would now be summer and by the time we can meet in larger groups i think it would be the fall i think i kind of agree with brandy that we stick with the one event we have there and maybe take some time to to plan next year's event you know make it bigger and better than it it could have been because we'll have more time on our hands okay. if we're getting rid of that uh spring diversity university events i don't know if we need a motion to uh, say that we're we're going to cancel it. Whitney, do you know, do we need to be that official here? I don't think so. Okay. So then unless there's any objection, uh, I say we just move forward with the fall event and we'll reassess next spring on the um, next spring event. Sounds good to me. Sounds good. Yep. Good. And Brandy, thank you for the work that you put into that because it was a great idea. And I, I know you put some work in and it was all on your hands. So we appreciate it. Thank you. We'll just have to do it next year. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, so the next on the list is the speaking to service clubs and committees. Uh, I know that Sister Hannah has done some of that already. I'm not sure if she's done any, any more presentations since our last meeting. Um, Sister Hannah, do you have an update? I do. Um, I was scheduled to give two talks to Touchmark this summer, one to the men and one to the women. And they called me today and I'm, they want me to do it over Microsoft Teams for so I have to figure out how to do the PowerPoint. I'm not. Um, and I'll do that July 16th cool. in the morning. And, we're, and they'll just do all the men and women together since since they're going to be all in their own rooms watching. Um, they said this this Thursday talk is just so big that they have to do it over online, which is fine. Um, so that'll be good, I think. We'll get get them all in at once. I think it's um, a good amount of people, so that'll be good. That's awesome, and thanks for taking that on. It's mm -hmm. been busy. <laughs> yeah. So we appreciate it. Yeah, I'm enjoying it. So. 
And then our, our last bullet there under our HRC goals is participate in community events. Um, much like our Spring Diversity University event, right. any of our other <laughs> events, are not, um, they're not really happening. So um, that's also an item that'll uh, likely be tabled unless anyone has an event that we should be aware of and should be a part of. All right, hearing no feedback on that, we'll move into other business. Um, a couple of things that I'll probably let Whitney take the lead on here. Uh, first, talking about future meetings. Um, we've been meeting over Teams. Um, we've canceled a few meetings due to COVID-19. Uh, Whitney, what can we expect moving forward here? Um, I talked with Jason today and he said that um, we're following CDC guidelines and for our meetings going forward until they lift the social distancing part of that guideline, um, we will still have to meet virtually. Um, we don't have a big enough space to accommodate the committee and still practice social distancing. So once that has been lifted, then we can go back to meeting in person. Do you know, did Jason, did Jason have any idea um, of timeline? Have they given any indication of what things are looking at or is it entirely up in the air? We kind of just get it as the CDC and the governor release it. So usually when everyone else finds out is when we find out, okay. unfortunately. Sure. It's kind of a week by week basis, sometimes day by day. Yeah. So I suspect, you know, in the in the months ahead, you'll uh, keep us updated and let us know if the opportunity to meet in person arises, right? Of course. Okay. Uh, the other bit of information, Jason reached out to me today, and Whitney, I'll, I'll read a little bit of what was shared with me, but if you have anything to add, please do. Um, Jason couldn't attend tonight's meeting, but he did want to share some information about a recent development at the state level. So the North Dakota Department of Health has recently created a new public health specialist position, and that position is intended to help fill the gaps between local government agencies, state offices, and new Americans. She has coordinated a few virtual meetings where we've just begun to discuss this topic and how to better communicate and coordinate with new Americans. So as this effort gains momentum, Jason will be happy to share updates with us. Uh, he also connected with Leah Hargrove, and he thinks that through Bismarck Global Neighbors, and, and she is the executive director there, and the state's efforts, he thinks we'll see some great strides um, for the community in the months ahead. So Jason will likely have an update on that. Whitney, I don't know if there's any more detail you want to add. Um. No, that's pretty much what Jason has shared with me is that um, they're looking for the HRC's help with um, different members of the community and reaching out to those people. Um, so they, I guess they're kind of looking to us as a resource for some of our community contacts. And that's pretty much all that I've heard. Okay. So when we hear more, um, I think he'll definitely have within the next month or two more information to share as the programs get up and going. And I did receive a, a phone call from Leah Hargrove uh, late last week. I've tried to follow up with her a few more times, but she hasn't gotten back to me. So I'm not sure if that's because she had already spoke to Jason and maybe they're waiting more information from the state. But um I'll be in touch with her um, as soon as I can be, and I'll make sure to bring anything I learned back to the committee. So that was uh, the other business that I had on the agenda. Is there anything else that any of our committee members would like to share? Um, this is Brandy. I actually had something that I wanted to share, and I don't expect full on conversation, but it's something that I, I would like the committee to um, take some time even outside of this meeting to review. So um, while I was running um, for city commission, obviously a lot of different things occurred additionally to COVID and kind of the racial equality and social unrest with the protest. Nah, 
locally as well as nationally is obviously in the forefront for many of us. And one of the things that I think we have an opportunity to do as a human relations committee is start um, figuring out ways on how we can start having that conversation with the department directors as well as the city commissioners themselves to start discussing policies that we currently have that govern our city as well as um, maybe even advising on some of those or looking at new ones that are coming up to the forefront. So I actually, if I can share the screen, I wanted to share something that was shared with me. Um, this is a municipal action guide and what I I'm asking of the committee is that everyone just takes some time to review it and maybe we can discuss how can the Human Relations Committee be more of an advocate and a voice for the city of Bismarck when it comes to racial equality as well as discrimination on a whole since we are leading through education as part of our mission statement. Um, so through this guide, and I can share this as well, there's a number of kind of highlighted areas. This organization, the National League of Cities, works with municipal cities all over the nation, and they help just kind of set some guidelines um, everywhere. And so one of the things for, I guess, myself is being an LGBTQ member of Bismarck, it's it's not easy, you know, like obviously there's progress, but when we're talking or when the last couple weeks when we've seen these protests and to see just blatant racism as well as like subtle or uninformed racism happening and discrimination, I think that it's our duty in some ways to help educate the city in some manner. So whether that's through the diversity university events or if it's actually taking the time to step outside of it and start really working with city commissioners and advising them on what language is being placed in the policy i think this gives us an opportunity to really really uphold our mission statement so as you can see kind of scrolling down like something as simple as making a public declaration in bismarck yeah that's really really bold um, but i think that it also can help people reference us as a resource and understand that we're continuing to advise city elected officials and making sure that Bismarck is a safe place for everyone who lives here, not just white people or just specific groups of people of color. So I um, asked Whitney to share it with her, the link itself, so that everyone then could have an opportunity to take a look at it. And I didn't get that link. Will you try sending? I didn't me send. Again? Yeah. Oh, I didn't send the link yet. I had asked Whitney if I could share it after this meeting, so that to her, so she could share it to everyone, so it wasn't considered like a special meeting that I was sending a link to everyone. But I, I just kind of wanted to bring this up and give the committee a chance to maybe think it over before our next meeting and review the material that. Is just kind of a baseline starting point but i think that we do have an obligation as the human relations committee to start addressing some of these uncomfortable conversations that are necessary so that we really can advocate through education yeah that would be really good so brandy is this something you want to kind of an effort you want to take the lead on or are you just looking for some feedback on is the committee interested in pursuing this? I, if I have support of the committee after our next meeting or, or whatnot, I would be happy to take the lead on, but I would have the expectation that a special committee would be created to work with me. Um, being a, like, it would look silly for um, just myself saying like we need to change this and i say that because as a human relations committee um i think that we should have multiple faces saying that this is important work to be doing out of our committee and within our city and also um it's i just think that having different perspectives is also going to be important to head up the conversations that are necessary to implement um, this type of initiative. 
So do you think we'd want to, I know we've, we've talked about having subcommittees in the past and when we, we form subcommittees, there's some issues because we are, uh, we do have to follow kind of the guidance of Robert's rules of order as far as for notification, things like that. So do you see a, um, this as being a subcommittee or do you just want our committee to support this and to help I, you and, and be active voices? Because we could look into forming another committee, or, you know, a subcommittee, but I think that might be quite a bit of work. Um, I think we could have the, the whole committee involved to an extent, you know, we could have, we could identify those who are interested in taking a more active role. Um, and I, th I think, uh, Whitney, you'd probably have to explain, we could have those who are working on it could have conversations outside of these meetings. They just couldn't take any com committee action, right? Right, I would have to check with Janelle on that just to make sure. Okay. Um, I think it is considered a meeting of the subcommittee so that you could report back to the committee. Um, and is it a subcommittee we would be forming? Because I think at a meeting or two ago, or maybe it was even three, we talked about forming a subcommittee and I think we were advised against that because the subcommittee would be expected to follow the same rules as the regular committee, so we'd have to be giving out notice, things like that, right? And I, under, I understand that it may be a little more work. This is kind of where I'm at with that. If we are going to use these excuse that Robert's rules is going to be too much to create a subcommittee, um, to address like true social needs in our community, I don't know why or where we stand as a committee with, with our mission and our ethics then. Like we, I understand that if we start meeting and it would require a special meeting or a special committee, I am willing to take on that additional work. Um, as long as those individuals who are on that subcommittee with me are, are equally there as well to match that pace. If the committee as a whole is willing to address this and carry it out at the level it's needed to uh, with me, then I don't see a need to create a special committee. But I think to use the excuse that it's going to be too much work to change policy to protect people of color is kind of a poor excuse not to at least try. No, Brandy, that's not what I was trying to say. I think you misunderstand. I'm wondering if a subcommittee is the right way to do it. I'm wondering well, I'm if the other best other way to do it is to have full committee involvement. And you'll always have some committee members that are more active than others. But I don't know why we can't have it be something that we discuss and plan at these meetings. I think that it has a stronger voice if it comes from the committee as a whole, right? If we all rally around it. So I'm just trying to think, and I'm not as smart as Jason and Whitney are when it comes to, you know, the, the rules that we have to follow when we're, um, you know, serving in this capacity as a city committee. So that's more so what I was looking for. Is it best to, to create this group? What are the expectations of, you know, how this group would have to proceed? And is it just easier um, to have the full committee, you know, to do this at our already scheduled committee meetings? I am trying to remember what issues we had in the past, but I know that, you know, we can't have, we can only have so many committee members in a place at the same time. So it can sometimes be just more difficult to hold the subcommittee meetings than if we just do it during a regularly scheduled meeting. So and I'm fine with that. I just really want to share the link um, with the initially with the information as a starting point. And then when we come back together, possibly having it on the next agenda to see how the com every single one of us feel about not moving forward with it or moving forward with it and how, how that would look. That's just really where the my initial request is at this time is to be able to share the link with everyone through Whitney and then um, just having essentially like people's feedback next next time we meet. No, I think that's great. I'm glad that you brought this forward. I think that there's a lot of good information there. And I think that you're right. This is something that 
we should be involved in. It aligns with our mission and the work that we should be doing. I think that we were probably formed to do. Um, so if you want to share that link with um, Whitney and Whitney, if you want to send that out. And then also if Whitney, if you and Jason could, and Janelle could talk about this prior to the next meeting, so you can just advise us if this is something the committee would like to, you know, proceed with, what should that look like? What do we need to know before we start moving forward with it? That would be really helpful. I will talk with Janelle and Jason and before, before I send out the, um, the link, I'll send like what it would take to create a subcommittee and kind of like, so just so people know to have it thinking, you know, in the back of your mind for the next meeting, some things to think about. Yeah, think, no, that would be great. Yeah, I think that would be good. Uh, one thing is uh, we can also look to, to the function and where we, we have limit as a committee to know what uh, having a subcommittee, what will be the requirements, what is our function, what need to be done. So if we could get the link, Read through it. I remember read through the link, and you know, Winnie can also look work with Jason to know whether having a subcommittee would be good, or we can just work together as a whole committee on that project. And then by the next meeting, that can be part of the agenda, and we will already have read the link and know what the information in there, so we all can discuss it the next meeting. You know, so I think that doing it that way will be better. Thanks, Kali. I think, you know, I, I agree with, with both you and Brandy on that. And I think one thing that's um, nice here, too, is that, you know, if we all take the initiative to read that, we'll really have a better understanding about what it is. It gives us a little time to just think how we, we could get involved. And, um, you know, I look forward to, you know, kind of Jason and Janelle's feedback. There are some limitations that we have on a committee because we are a submit to the committee. So it would be good to know that before we proceed. So Brandy, by bringing this up now, um, I think that gives city our city liaisons time to give us information on what that might look like, because it might look different than what we, we see. But I think it's important to pursue. And I also think with everything at a kind of a standstill right now, this gives us a project, a meaningful project to work on. And so I think that's that's pretty great, too. So thanks for bringing that forward. And I'm excited to see what we're able to do with that. I look forward to getting the link. Yeah, I just sent it to Whitney. And then if um, there's a, there's, that's to the specific um, like guidelines, the PDF file, but the website link should be also, or the website is just NLC. So if I need to send that as well, I'll just, Whitney can um, let me know and I can send that. And um, it speaks from the position of, you know, it talks about city leaders and I think that we are those and so we can kind of, um, I, in some ways it references maybe elected officials and I think that that's where the advising piece could come into play on our part. But like I said, I'm just asking that everyone review it and then we have more discussion on it the next time we meet versus right now, um, trying to explain out the document when no one else has read it. So I appreciate everyone um, having a willingness to read it. Definitely. Yeah. Also um, worth noting that the, or the League of Cities is a, is a pretty reputable source. So I'm sure those materials are gonna be, you know, really well thought out. So that's, uh, it's a good source to be, you know, kind of guiding us through this process. Uh, with that said, that was what I had under the other business. Brandy brought a, a little more information on um, what she's looking at. Is there anything else that we want to talk about before we adjourn? Uh, if not, I think as of now, I suspect our next meeting will be held virtually as well. Um, if you're able to connect uh, via computer, that might be helpful as we're going into this discussion um, at the next meeting on what Brandy brought forward. She might have information she wants to share. And unfortunately, if, if you're calling by phone, you might not have the opportunity to see things that um, maybe can't be sent out by mail. So if possible, if you're able to join um, by computer, uh, please do. And 
if Whitney or Jason get any new guidelines as far as whether or not we'll meet in person, uh, Whitney will let us know and, and hopefully we can all see each other soon. But I think we've got some great things to work on here. You know, we might not be able to hold events for a while, but that doesn't mean we can't fulfill a purpose. So um, thanks for bringing that forward, Brandy. Uh, thank you. And then also um, at the next meeting, we'll touch on the student liaison. We'll have that draft from Manisha. So that gives us a few things to work on. And, and I guess having no other business, we can look for an adjournment. Do I have a motion to adjourn? I'll make a motion to adjourn. Okay, Darcy. Second to that. Okay, Holly seconded. Uh, do we need to do a roll call vote for adjournment, Whitney? I, I think we can just kind of adjourn. Unknown participant is now exiting. Yeah, no, that was, we don't need to roll call for that one. Okay. All right. Well, then thank you everybody for being here. Uh, have a good month ahead, a good summer, and we'll see you guys in July. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Sounds good. Multiple people are now exiting. Whitney Olson is now exiting.